Hallelujah, God. We give you glory today. We honor you, Father. We say, have your way today in Jesus' name. We lift you up, God. We magnify you. There is none greater than you in all the earth. Every knee must bow to the name of Jesus. And we thank you this morning, God. We thank you, God, for your fire. We thank you for your authority. We thank you for your wonder-working power today in Jesus' name. We give you glory, Father. We thank you for bringing us through another week and ushering in new days for us to see new mercies each day. We thank you, Father, for being loving, for being kind, for watching over us and protecting us from all hurt, harm, and danger. We give you the glory, God, for the breath in our lungs this morning, that it's about you and not about us. We yield to your will. We yield to your way, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. We say do what only you can do. Heal God, deliver, and even set the captives free, Father God, from anything that's holding us back, from anything that's holding, pulling us back to the old way, from anything that's separating us from you, God. We say have your way today in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray this morning on this Resurrection Sunday of 2021, God, we pray over your manservant for the word that he's ushering before the people of God this morning, what you put on his heart, God, what the people who are in anticipation are waiting to hear and see, Father. We thank you, God, because we know that it's going to be a word that is right on time. We know that it's going to be a word, Father God, to gird us up and help us for where you're taking us. We pray that you would release your angels and flank them on every side of Pastor Calvin as he's bringing forth this word that there be no malfunctions, that there be no interruptions, that there be no disruptions in Jesus' name, but your, that your word goes forth without a hitch, without any hindrances, and is received by those who you need to receive it this morning, Father. We just thank you and praise you. Lord, we give you glory, God. We give you glory, Father, for what you desire to do this morning. Use Remnant International Church. We're not here just to say that we're here, but we're here to yield and follow the unction of the Holy Spirit. Father, use remnant this morning to touch someone, to touch a backslider, to touch someone who hasn't been feeling church lately. Let them know that you love them. Let them know that you died for even every single one of their sins today. We just thank you this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for those who are sick, those who are standing in the need of just a financial outpouring in Jesus' name, we pray, Father God, that each and every situation, God, of the people who are watching today, who whoever somebody decides to share this message with today, Father, that you would meet them at their need. You would meet them right where they need you and show them how to break through. We just give you glory, honor, and praise this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Remnant International Church. Again, this is Resurrection Sunday and we're so happy to be before you because we do this for the very reason that Jesus was born, he died, and he rose and yet lives today. So no matter where you are, if someone shared this message with you, if you're a new follower, if you just discovered us, or if you've always been following us, 
we welcome you to today's uh, Resurrection Sunday service, and we pray that it blesses you. Now, I take that back. We know that it's going to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. We just give God all the honor, glory, and praise. If you want to find out more about us, log on to Remnant International Church, where you can read about how we started, what we're doing, and you can even watch some sermons there online. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn this over to Pastor Calvin because I know that we are all in anticipation for what God is going to do this Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Lord, I just thank you and I praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. I just lift you up, Lord God, for you are worthy to be praised, Lord God. Being our Alpha, Omega, the beginning and the end, Lord God, everything begins and ends with you. We just thank you and we praise you. We thank you for Jesus this morning, Lord God. Most of all, we thank you for Jesus, his saving grace, Lord God, for your relationship, Lord God, that he stepped down, Lord God, from glory to save a wretch like me. I just thank you and I praise you, Lord God. Father, I ask that all sins be forgiven, be washed away, Lord God, even as we have taken communion, Lord God, even though we've asked for forgiveness, Lord God, even though none are perfect, Lord God, Father, we ask that you just wash us in the blood of Jesus this morning, Lord God. I pray your will be done, Lord God, in everything we do, Lord God. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I just want to thank God this morning and just lift him up this morning and stuff and just tell him how much we love him, how much we appreciate him, how much we adore him. I just thank God for in the midst of the daily struggles, everything that we go through, Lord, that he's still God. I don't know about you, but if he's brought you through something, if he's helped you, if he showed up in a mighty way, if you had that relationship with him this morning, we just want to welcome him in. We just want to saturate the atmosphere with his presence. We need to invite the Holy Spirit into this place to come and be in the midst, to come and fill us up, to come and saturate the atmosphere, to come and fill us up, to move me out of the way and let his spirit rise. So we ask in the name of Jesus that his spirit just comes and saturate this atmosphere, change it from this ordinary room, Lord God, to a holy meeting place, Lord God, where we can be found worthy, Lord God, to be in your midst, Lord God. Have your way today, Lord God. It's not about us. It's not about how we feel, and it's not about what we've been through, Lord God, but it's all about you, Lord God. It's all about you, Lord God, and we just lift you up. We welcome you in this morning, Lord God. Father, we say have your way every day, Lord God, every moment, every hour. We want you to have your way, Lord God. Father, we come to glorify you, Lord God. We're not looking for your glory, Lord God. We're not wanting to be seen or anything, Lord God. We want you to be glorified in this hour and in this moment, Lord God. Fill us up, Lord God. Fill us up, Lord God. I can't do this on my own, Lord God. I call on the Holy Spirit to just fall down there, Lord God. Let it just fill me up, Lord God, so that I can be that gardener, Lord God, planting, Lord God, spreading seeds, Lord God, and you watering them, Lord God, and bringing them up into who you want them to be. We just thank you and we praise you this morning, Lord God. For you are always worthy to be praised. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We just thank you and we praise you, Lord God. 
We thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. You're welcome in this place, Lord God. Let your presence be felt, Lord God. Let us know you're in the midst, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Send a fire, Lord God. Send your fire, Lord God. You are welcome in this place, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. Father, we come to praise you and lift you up this morning, Lord God. We come to celebrate Jesus, Lord God. We come to tell you how much we love you, Lord God. How much we appreciate you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. We thank you for our love Lord, that surpasses all understanding, Lord God. I just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to thank you, Lord. 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 I just want to thank you, Lord God. For you've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. You've been so good to me. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. In the midst of every situation, Lord God, you've still been good to me. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah to your name, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. You are welcome here, Lord God. This is your home, Lord God. You reside here, Lord God. Your presence, Lord God, reigns. We serve no other God. There is no other God but the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Lord Oh, for the Lord God of heaven is saying, even this morning, that behold, I make all things new. For I say, I am ushering in a newness into your life like never before. For I said, just when you thought things were barren, just when you think things couldn't get worse, yea, I am ushering in freshness into every area of your life. The Lord God of heaven is saying even now receive it by faith and it shall be so in your life. I am ushering in newness into your limbs, into your health, into your finances, into your mind, into your job situation. Every area that you think is off limits to me, I take command of those things right now and I say new shall fall upon you right now in Jesus' name. The newness of God shall fall upon you right now in Jesus' name. Oh, Morning by morning, new mercies. Oh, we say newness, a regeneration of limbs, of veins, of vessels, of blood flow. For the Lord is ushering in new today, in this season. For this season, by faith, when you take a hold of it, God is going to make all things new. The spouse that you thought wouldn't get saved is coming to Jesus. The children you thought wouldn't get saved are coming to Jesus. The job that you thought would never promote you, oh, release that promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. We decree newness over every area of your life this morning. God is saying like the woman with the issue of blood, just stretch forth your hand in faith and believe and it shall be so in your life. And I just decree this in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 
And so you receive and believe the word that went forth this morning. That's the prophetic. This is a prophetic deliverance ministry. And you just got an example of the prophetic. And we pray the words we share that that which we do brings deliverance, brings healing, brings wholeness. That you may have that intimate relationship with God. It's not about us breaking. It's just about you surrendering, you submitting, you saying, God, here I am. And mean it. I wanted to sing, Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. You just heard just one example why it's the because he first loved us. You just heard the prophetic, the word that just came from him, the things that he said he wants to do. Hallelujah. If you believe, if you surrender, if you are part of his family, these things are waiting from you. It's not coming from me, Pastor Calvin. It's not coming from Prophetess Linda. Those were the words of God. I can't do it for you. It's about you surrendering and seeking his face so that these things, too, may come to you. Yes. Wherever you are, just lift him up this morning. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of the Savior's love who died and set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. It tells me of one whose loving heart can feel my deepest woe, who in each sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, because he first loved me. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to beat you guys up with my singing anymore. I just wanted to share one more. And it's called Praise Him. This is his day. Praise Him. We want to praise Him this morning for what he's done. Praise him because his word never failed. Praise him because three days later he got up from the cross. We just thank God. We just He rose from the grave, I should say. 
We just thank God for him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus. Excuse me. Blessed Savior. He's worthy to be praised. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, he's worthy, Jesus is worthy, he's worthy to be praised, praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised, glory, glory. Glory, glory, in all things, give him glory, he's worthy to be praised, praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus, blessed Savior, he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I just had to give praise to Jesus. He said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I know I'm not the best singer, and I know that's one of the reasons why he hasn't called me to sing. But you got to lift up a joyful noise. You got to honor him for what he's done and who he is. And even if it's coming from a voice like mine, I just had to take a few minutes just to lift him up and praise him. Just to let him know how much I appreciate him. Just to let him know how important he is. Just to let him know that I acknowledge what he does. Just to let him know how much I love him. We just wanted to praise him this morning. Praise him this morning. We praise you this morning, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. I want to just get right into this message. I'm coming from the book of Hebrews, and it's talking about the, uh, the Jesus-believing Jews who are falling away from the faith. The final realities God has re revealed in the new covenant to the temporary ones of the first covenant. Be encouraged to respond to the threat of persecuting persecution by recommitting to the new reality brought by Jesus Christ. Jesus is our apostle, sent by God for a specific mission. Just like I said, we're here to do um, God's work, right? I always say that we're here as, as workers for God, punching a clock. And here you see, it says that Jesus was sent by God for a specific mission. He wasn't James Bond 007. He didn't have all the gadgets. He didn't need any of that. All he did was listen to what his father said, and he did it. 
And he brings us into a greater and promised land that Moses and Joshua brought Israel into. Jesus is a more effective high priest than the priest appointed by the law of Moses. As God's faithful people have done throughout the ages, we must continue living in the light of God's unseen heavenly realities and stepping out in faith. Through the Messiah, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So you saw a little bit today when the prophet has shared a word, just because of the prayers being lifted up, it ignited that prophetic in her, and Jesus came in the midst. He shared a word. So all of it, some of it may be unseen, but you can experience it. You can feel it. You can hear it for yourself. Lord, <clears throat> it's something we as a people need to be thriving for. That intimate relationship. It's like being in a relationship with a spouse and not having a conversation. You guys are joined together. You're in a relationship and nobody's talking to nobody. We want to be talking to God all the time. We want to hear from him. We want to steady be lifting up in praise. We want to steady be lifting up prayers. We want to steady be lifting up, telling them how much we love them, how much we adore them, acknowledging who he is and what he's done for us. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. This morning I'm coming from the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter. I'm only reading three scriptures, but I'm coming from three different uh, versions. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and 1. One says, do you see what this, this is the message. I want, you, I want you to see the way we do it and stuff. How we go to the different versions to get the full meaning here that God is bringing to us. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who have blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down, stop running, and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sin. Two, keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race. We are in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finishing line, finishing in and with God. Excuse me. He could put up with anything along the way. The cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. Three, when you find yourself flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through that will shoot adrenaline in your souls. That was from the message. I want to go from to the Amplified. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, who by faith have testified to the truth of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight, and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. <coughs> Excuse me. Looking away from all that will distract us and focusing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author. Thank you. Excuse me. Who is the author and perfecter of faith? The first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity. Who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross disregarding the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his deity, his authority, 
and the completion of his work. Amen. Three, just consider and meditate on him who endured from sin and such bitterness, hostility against himself. Consider it, consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. The last version is the Amplified Classic. Therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who have borne testimony to the truth, let us strip off and throw aside every encumbrance, that's unnecessary weight, that sin which so readily and deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us, and let us run with patient endurance and steady and active persistence the appointed course of the race that is set before us. Amen. Looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader, the source of our faith, given the first incentive for our belief and is also its finisher bringing it to maturity and perfection. He, the joy of obtaining the prize that was set before him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Just think of him who endured from sinners such grievous opposition and bitter hostility against himself, Reckon up and consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you may not grow weary or exhausted, losing heart and relaxing and fainting in your mind. What I'm trying to share this morning, I'm trying to share about endurance. I'm trying to share about endurance. The things we have to endure here on earth. The things we have to endure on the job. The things we endure in our own household. The endurance to finish the race. And Jesus was talk this, talking about Jesus and the things that he went through to accomplish his Father's will. Right here in the first verse, I'm going to go to the classic of Amplified. It says, therefore then, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, all the different witnesses that we can go to that are in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the disciples, everyone who's written, Paul, that has written about Jesus and, and what he's done and meeting him and experiencing him and being with him. He said, let us strip off and throw away every encumbrance that unnecessary weight, that hurt, that hurt that I keep talking about that so many people want to keep on holding on to and carrying. He said, we got to strip it off. That's one of the things that Jesus did. He took on that. He took on the hurt. We have to forgive. Take it off. If God is forgiving you for that, throw it into the sea of forgetfulness like he did. That sin so readily and deftly and cleverly clings to and entangles us. <clears throat> One of the things about hurt, we had a Friday, this Friday that just passed. We was with two beautiful couples. They made us a, a, a feast. They were celebrating a birthday, and we was feasting over there. But the main thing about it was the fellowship, and we was talking about God and who he is to us and what it is and things. And one of the things that almost seemed like I was preaching on Friday night, and one of the things he was talking about when I was just mentioning the hurt is we, us not understanding that the enemy is making sure that he keeps us from being who God has called us to be. He sends uh, spirits in people who are carrying that hurt. Who are carrying that disappointment. You got to understand, when you're carrying that, you're like sending out an SOS to every demon, every evil spirit to come and inhabit me. Come and use me. 
You get those cracks in, and they come in, and you do things that are not of God. And that's what it says, so easily encumbers us with unnecessary weight. Mm -hmm. Stuff definitely and cleverly. We don't even think about it. We just hurt in the moment and things like that. And you want to stay in that. I want to. You get hurt and you want to hurt. You're not seeking God. You're not remembering that Jesus took it all away. We were talking about how. And that hurt is an experience that something that we're supposed to learn, something that we're supposed to grow in. We have to look and say, if a if a, a ship on the water just struck a rock or, or was torpedoed, everybody on that ship is going to find that hole and try to plug it up to keep the ship from sinking. Amen. <clears throat> it's the same thing with our hurts that keep us in bondage. It keep us being used by the enemy. When we may in torpedo, when we want to ground and hit that rock, it's got to be all hands on deck. We got to realize what's going on. We got to plug up that hole. We got to come to Jesus. We got to ask for forgiveness. And we got to be the overcomers he created us to be. Hallelujah. Come to encourage you to endure the race as Jesus did and the reward he received because he endured. There's too many of us that's in bondage, that's not in the places where we're supposed to be in. You just think about even being in ministry and the people we know and the, the people we relate to and who've known us before and now since you become pastors, they can't even call you pastor or anything like that. And I always say, if you question whether we're pastors or not, and you say you have a relationship with God, ask him and see what he tells you. Yeah, that's right. All you got to do is ask him. Don't rely on your pastor. Don't rely because there wasn't no degree. Who do you know in the Bible that had a degree besides Paul? Hmm. Hallelujah. Those are in hindrances that try to keep us from moving into the place where we're supposed to be. But we have to endure it anyway. See, we said all hands on deck. If God has called us to do what he's called us to do, no matter what they say, no matter what they're doing, no matter if they can't recognize we have to endure and move forward and do what God has called us to do. We thought back on it. If we didn't do what God has called us to do when we were called, all the different lives that we've interacted with, what we've done in other countries by feeding people and providing yes. in this home-based ministry, they can't even imagine the number of people that we're connected to. The people that we've ministered to, yes. prayed for, helped, assisted. We're not looking for the glory. Everything we did was for him and his kingdom. And you're going to let somebody keep you from doing what God has called you to do? We have to move past that. We have to move into our rightful positions and become the men and women that God has called us to be. Even when you don't get the encouragement, even if it's not coming from within your own household. Mm -hmm. You have uh, husbands and wives unequally yoked. And the wife might be praying for the husband to get it. Or the husband can be praying for the wife to get it. And then you got children in the middle, and they don't know which way to go. Mm -hmm. There's so many different things that are hindering us and keeping us from the blessings that were just shared by the prophetess. Mm -hmm. I want, I don't know about you. But as she was saying them, I was over here saying, I receive them all. 
in the name of Jesus. Even if they were just for me, which I don't believe they were just for me, I believe they were for all of us. Yes, God. Anybody who surrenders to perfect will in way, anybody listening to this message, yes, God. anybody who believed that Jesus rose three days later, In verse 2, we're talking about the distractions, which I was just talking about. Mm -hmm. The different people that enemy sends to distract us and keep us from doing what Jesus did. He said, Jesus, who's the leader and the source of our faith, given the first incentive for our belief, is also its finisher. He is in the beginning and the end. He started it all with the Father. He said, let us, let us we gotta become mature. We gotta be who God has called us to be. We can't get caught up on the different things that keep us from achieving what God has set forth for us to do and be. He said, Jesus was saying here, he Finishing the race. Right? That exhilarating finish. In and with God. Who both began and finished this race we're in. Right? I'm trying to pass the baton to you now. You think about those relay races uh, we used to run as kids and stuff. When we used to, four or five of us would be on a track and stuff and each one be in a different position and you run in that race and you get to your person and he's supposed to pass off the baton and he goes the next leg of the race. That's what we got to do. But we don't fall back and not do what that which God has called us to do. We continue. But we just lifted up that person. We empower that person to keep moving on through Jesus. Not by us, but through Jesus. Amen. He gets all the glory, yes. all the honor, and all the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hindrances and endurance. To try to endure through the hindrances. And so Jesus, he could put up with anything along the way. And it started with the cross. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know about you, but I saw the passion of Christ. And man, I cried. I cried. I cried because he was on the cross because of things that I'd done. Mm -hmm. So when some of those licks he took, even before he went to the cross, when he was tortured by the soldiers and stuff, every strike, I had to ask him for forgiveness. Jesus. Because I fell away. Maybe I thought I knew better. Maybe I thought there was no price to pay. Maybe I thought I wasn't hurting nobody but myself. Whatever the reasoning, Jesus paid it all. Even before he went to the cross, as I was saying. But that final thing, being on the cross, it wasn't until he died that the soldier finally said that this man was truly of God. Amen. That's right. <clears throat> the shame. The shame of a people he came to save, not recognizing who he is. He said, if you knew me, you know, know my father. But there were some who said, you can't be. You're from, yeah. you can't be. Nothing good comes from whatever they put him through. And now he's there in the place of honor, right alongside God. In Psalms 110 and 1, it said, the Lord God said to my Lord, the Messiah, Jesus, who sacrificed himself for you and me. Sit at my right hand until I make your adversaries 
your footstool. Why wouldn't you want to follow a God like that? All those that came up against us, all those they sent against us, all those will be under Jesus' feet. Mm -hmm. He's covering it all. He paid it all. Jesus said to them in Matthew 26 and 64, Jesus said the high, to the high priest, you have stated the fact. More than that, I tell you, you will see in the future you will in the future see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the Almighty coming on the clouds of the sky. Thank you, Jesus. In Acts 2 and 34, for David did not ascend into the heavens, yet he himself says, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand and share my throne. 1 Corinthians 15 and 25, for Christ must be king and reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. Colossians 3 and 1, if then you have been raised with Christ to a new life, thus sharing his resurrection from the dead, aim at and seek rip, seek the rich eternal treasures that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand, seated at the right hand. You just heard from the prophet. Jesus shared that even before I got started. He said it's a new life in Christ. Many of the things we used to do, we can't do no more. We don't even want to do anymore. We want to come to learn about Jesus. We want to be that new creature in Christ. We understand that he went to the grave, but three days later he resurrected for you and me. He said, aim at it and seek it. The rich eternal treasures. Understand what eternal treasures are. There's nothing here on earth, no matter how much wealth you gather up, no matter how many zeros are in your account, no matter how much junk is in your garage, no matter how many cars are sitting out front, there's nothing here we're going to take with us. But eternal treasures, Hallelujah. rich eternal Treasures. And I'm not just saying to do it just because you'll get these. I'm saying to do it just because he is. Just because he is. He is God the Father. He is God the Son. He is God the Holy Spirit. He's the one who endured the cross. But three days later rolls on our behalf. Jesus is telling us that there's nothing that we're enduring here. There's nothing that we're going through that's harder than what he went through. He's not trying to get us to make, but 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 you see what they did to me at the job. You see how much they did. I don't want to hear it. How can it compare to what Jesus went through? But you see what was going on in my house. You see what my husband put me through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't want to hear it. That's not the brother that I set aside for you. That's not the sister that I set aside for you. You chose on your own. You kept saying that this is the marriage that God put me in, and he looked at it and said, I didn't do that. You did that. Amen. Amen. Jesus paid it all today. Jesus paid it all. I remember, we won't even go to Jesus paid it all, all to him. We just got to remember and endure that there's nothing that we're going through that we can't overcome if we put our faith, our trust in him. 
That's all he wants. It's about the relationship. We talked about that Friday night. No, it wasn't a service. It was a fellowship between three couples. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. We owe everything to him. And just don't do it because it's today. I understand back in the day people celebrated uh, Resurrection Sunday. What was it? The leg of lamb because Jesus represented the lamb and everything else and things. We coming together with family and having these big feasts and, and things like that. And it's no problem when you call and you ring in that din dinner bell. The people are coming and, and knowing that they're going to eat. But are we really surrendering to God? Or when we put more into the ministry we're in, the, the person who's at the altar, I don't want you to rely on me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm imperfect. I'm still working on me. Jesus is still working on me. Like I said when I started, I'm the gardener spreading the seeds. Amen. That's all right. That's all he told me to do. Spread the seeds. He'll fertilize the ground. He'll put it in nutrients. He'll give it the light. He'll give it the sun. He gives it the rain. He grows it. All I got to do is drop seeds. And I'm dropping seeds this morning. I'm dropping seeds to welcome you into being part of his family. Welcoming you into being back, back, coming back to the family. Welcome you into not waiting, not trying to clean up yourself, but try just trusting in Jesus enough to do it his way. I mean, we try so hard to get things done. We try, strive for different things that we want to accomplish, things that we want to do. But Jesus makes it easy for us. Hallelujah. There's things that happen that I may have needed, and even before I can lift up a prayer and stuff, it's already done. That's how much Jesus loves me. He don't love me any more than he loves you. There's no favorites. All of us. He didn't sacrifice his son just for me. He sent them for all of us. All who recognize him as Savior. Amen. We're coming to share. We're coming by this word. We're coming standing on the promises of God. Each of us have gone through the mill. I was saying that we've been thrown back onto the potter's wheel. Every time you go through something, <clears throat> think of it as being thrown on a potter's wheel. And there's a reshaping going on. There's a newness of life going on. You can either react the way the world reacts and I'm going to get revenge, which could cost you your life, put you in jail, or send you to some place you don't want to go to with eternal life, with no rewards, just pain, agony. Or you can be reshaped to endure the race. To be empowered to go forward. Mm -hmm. To do what God has called you to do. And he's calling this morning. He's continually calling us. He said, Jesus paid it all. What else do I need to do? There's nothing else. I won't say that, but Jesus Christ paid it all. Yes. Yeah. He didn't have to do one more thing for me. But I thank you for everything he's done since then. Because I understand who he is. Even when I didn't think that I deserved it. There's many people in the Bible that fell away and came back. Yeah. Some of them didn't. He said, not all perfect except God. Come to Jesus this morning. Jesus is calling. He wants you to come home to Jesus. He's not calling you to meet him up in the air yet because you're not going to meet him unless you're part of the family. I was saying that I wanted to 
be able to see people that I've ministered to going up in the air, knowing that there were seeds that we laid from this ministry, prayers that was lifted up, and they made it. They made it. Because we chose to finish the rinse. We chose to endure. We chose to do what God has called us to do. Are you doing what God is calling you to do? Or are you worried about you and yours? Mm -hmm. How it says about our actions, right? What are your actions saying about you this morning? Jesus' actions said everything we need to know about him. What are your actions saying? It's time that we other people become proactive and be about our Father's business. I pray that something that I shared in this short message will help all of us to continue to grow, to not be caught by the enemy's snares, to be the overcomers in Christ that he created us to be. He didn't create no weak people. All of us are brothers and sisters, and we're standing on the promises of God. There's nothing we can't endure. There's nothing we can't overcome. There's no obstacle. There's no mountain that we can't move. I pray that some seed was dropped on fertile land this morning. Amen. And that it would sprout up. And you too would be the overcomer that he created you to be. To be that man. To be that father. To be that son that God has created you to be for your family. For his ministry. The wife. The mother. The daughter. The sister. That he needs you to be. Mm -hmm. We're all one in God. Amen. Let's try to come together to do what he's called us to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed message on endurance and just standing and learning to apply the scriptures to our lives. And even as Pastor Calvin was teaching, I was still meditating on the word about newness that the Lord started the service with after prayer. And immediately as I was looking at him, I saw new cars rolling off the lot. They were like colorful cars. In the, in the spirit, they were like going right across the front of his shirt, right? And the Lord began to say, you know, when you want the blessings of God, selfishness cannot reside in you. Amen. And he related that to the car. Because right now, we could have a, a two-car home, right? But the Lord laid it on my husband's heart to want to sow the one car, right? It's not about accumulating stuff. It's about being obedient to what the Father was saying. Because I barely drive. So to have two cars sitting there when someone else can be using it to get from work to work and back and forth to church, you know, that's more important than, you know, like he said, looking at stuff and accumulating all these cars and stuff. So the newness is coming, but you have to be one in your heart that is willing to say, you know what? I'm going to give. I'm going to sow, mm -hmm. right? We talked before about how so many times people want to buy a new car and they trade it in the old car, but they barely get anything for it. Bless someone's life with the old yeah. as God walks you into the new. God also began to say as I sat there, new lungs, like somebody is in need of new lungs, and he's going to supernaturally allow that to happen. You're not going to have to be on any transplant list. You're not going to have to wait. You're not going to have to 
beg and plead. It is already done in the spirit and he is releasing that to you by faith in Jesus' name. He said new body parts too. The parts of your body that feel like they're malfunctioning, that feel like they're betraying you. God said he's releasing a newness upon you in those particular areas. So if your hearing feels like it's going, God is saying supernaturally, son, supernaturally, daughter, I'm going to release the newness to you so that you can hear pristinely and crystal clear, right? Hallelujah. And then God began to talk about jobs. <coughs> the newness in the area of jobs. And he said, faithful job service will release you to work for God full time. Somebody needs to hear that again. Faithful job service will release you to work for God full time. So many of us want it the other way around. We want to work for God. We don't want to work for somebody else. But when you can faithfully get up, Put in your time, punch your clock, put in your vacation, come back from vacation, do your job as unto the Lord. He's going to move, not everyone, but those he's called to move into a ministry aspect of work. Amen? Amen. 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 So he talked about the job. You know, when God knows that you won't quit, he'll upgrade you. You know, he'll upgrade you when he knows that you won't quit. When you learn to finish what you start, he said, just as I was sitting there, when you learn to finish what you start, he will enlarge your territory. Amen. True story. We were faithful to the empty seats here, right? And now God has gone ahead and upgraded us with members who actually believe in the vision. They watch it. They're being blessed. That's their own testimony out of their mouth that they're being blessed by this ministry. But first we, had, first we had to be faithful to just being recorded, being on YouTube, having empty seats, and believing still that we were reaching someone with the kingdom message. Amen? Amen. Are you willing to be faithful? Like Pastor Calvin said, what are your actions saying, right? Say it with me. I surrender God to the newness that you have for my life. Give me the endurance to finish. That's what today's message was about. Give me the endurance to finish. Amen? I just wanted to share that with you and expound a little bit more on the newness we give God the glory again this, re this Resurrection Sunday, and we pray that this word that came forth this morning shifts your life in unimaginable ways. Amen? Be blessed.